In this video, I'm gonna be taking my first flight on the Open PPG SP140, and it'll also be my first flight on an electric paramotor in general. If you missed the last video, go back and watch it. We did the unboxing, the assembly, and the specs of this paramotor behind me. We also launched a brand new giveaway where one of you lucky viewers will take home this brand new SP140 electric paramotor. How do you get entered? Up until May 4th, every $5 spent on tuckergot.com gets you one entry to win. We just launched three brand new designs. The first being the Risky Biscuits National Force that I'm wearing right now, the Adrenaline Addict, and the topography. All these are available as decals as well. So when this video is over, be sure you visit the web store. First link in the description, make an order and you might take home this beautiful new paramotor. Now let's get into the first flight. So on the day of the flight, I wanted to make sure that my battery was completely topped off. So I plugged it into the charger, made sure it read 100%. But I also wanted to test the weight out of curiosity. When I put this thing on my bathroom scale, it came out to be 78.8 pounds with the battery installed, which is a little bit heavier than the claimed 75 pounds. Also out of curiosity, I wanted to see how much the battery alone weighs, and it came out to be 43.2 pounds, which means just the motor and the frame comes out to 35.6 pounds, which means the majority of the weight of this paramotor is the battery. I found that it's much easier to load the paramotor into the truck with the battery separated, now let's get real for a second. I've been paramoting for a little over 10 years. I would say I'm a bit jaded. For me now, it's more about quality over quantity of flights. I'm a lot more selective and not everything gets me as excited as it used to. But flying an electric paramotor for the first time, this thing has got me very excited. After I assembled it, of course, the winds were really high for a few days and I was really itching to get this thing out. And the first opportunity came along, but there was one major problem. A thunderstorm had developed nearby and the winds were pretty strong. So basically I decided I would take the motor out and I'd hang out at the field. Worst case scenario, I'd get some cool B-roll shots of the motor, but I could decide based upon the conditions when I was actually at the field. As I got closer and closer to sunset, the conditions were not really changing much. The winds were very strong, but they were pretty stable. I decided I was gonna go for it. Now on any other scenario, I would have no interest in flying in these conditions, but I was very much itching to fly this thing. So I decided to give it a shot under some conditions. I was gonna take off and feel out the air, and if it wasn't any good, then I'd just land immediately. Otherwise, because there was a thunderstorm nearby, I was gonna stay low to the ground and close to the LZ, so if any conditions changed, I could get on the ground safely and immediately. And turns out that kind of was the case. Oh, <laughs> mate, here we go. Um, yeah, it's windy. I uh, want to make that clear. It does feel a little bit unnatural to not have a motor running on my back while I'm doing this. No warm up. I didn't do my uh, ritual of putting gas in the motor and checking my fuel level because my fuel level is on an LCD display. Let's see if I can get this thing to flip over. Ooh. That throttle is a, uh, let's see, the throttle's a little awkward, but I've never used it before. How she goes. Woo! And we're up. I didn't even do a throttle run up to see how the response is. We just went for it. Let's try some full power like. Woo! Okay, so. That is nice, like when you want to rip into a turn, you have instant power. <laughs> I can't help but uh, think it feels kind of like a toy though. <laughs> Just listen to it. It's definitely not a toy. Shall we try a little touch and go in this windy ass wind? Oh my god, I almost fell backwards. That was a little weird. <laughs> Not used to the frame yet. Let's take off again. Um, outside of the trashy 
there. So far, we're doing really good. First impressions are it is incredibly smooth. Um, vibrations are very minimal. Especially the three blade prop makes it smoother, um, but it's an electric motor. There's one moving part on it, so of course it's smooth. Woo! That throttle is twitchy, my guy. And that sky looks horrendous. There's literally a thunderstorm or something going on right over there, uh, which is another reason why I want to stay really close to the LZ. So it turns out that thunderstorm was still developing and it would soon put an end to my first flight. In a few moments, I felt the air change and get a little bit more turbulent and I decided it was time to get on the ground. And I was completely right because a few minutes later, a massive gust front came through. Obviously not ideal conditions for a first flight and in reviewing this footage, I felt like I could do a lot better. So to bring you guys higher quality content, I came back out on another day with beautiful conditions to elaborate on my first impressions of this electric motor. All right, so we're back in much better conditions. Glassy smooth air, no thunderstorms, better lighting. I was just itching so hard to fly this thing, I couldn't stand it. But reviewing the footage, I knew I could do better. So we're here, we're live, and I wanna tell you guys some more things about this motor. The first thing I notice, the most prominent defining thing about this power plant is the instant throttle response. Let me show you. It literally, it just turns on and off instantly. If I want to bank a turn, I can bank a turn so fast because to do a turn like that, you need the power. And this thing has the power literally instantly. I'm in sport mode right now, which, uh, hey, a coyote. Sport mode gives you the fastest acceleration and the uh, most amount of power. And to be honest, it feels twitchy to begin with, but your mind adjusts to it, you get used to it, and uh, the twitchiness is actually really nice. The throttle band is completely linear. Like two-stroke engines normally have uh, an area right above cruise power where they really pick up. This one, because it's electric, completely smooth. Maximum power, if I do a full throttle climb right now, impressive. When the battery's fresh like that, the climb rate is extremely impressive. Um, after feeling that, I feel like this is a little bit more power than my Factory R, which is the tricked out motor from Viterazzi. Hey, someone's cooking burgers, that smells great. I think it has probably five or 10% more power than uh, the Moster Factory, which is really nice. Then you can talk about how smooth and quiet it is. I'm gonna do a video in the future um, comparing actual decibel readings between this motor and different gas motors. It's not like I would fly without earmuffs. It's not that quiet. It's significantly quieter, but it still has um, some noise to it. It has some volume, but it's a very not offensive sound. It's just this little hum, innocent electric sound and then propeller noise. Almost zero vibrations. You can see the frame shakes a little bit. That's probably just because the propeller's not perfectly balanced. To summarize this power plant, I would say if you could design the perfect power plant, um, all the characteristics that makes a paramotor engine good, this would be it. Like this is by far the nicest power plant I've ever flown compared to Viterazzi Mosters, um, the Tornado that I flew that had incredible power, the Polinis. I think this beats all of them in the, uh, the overall characteristics because engines aren't just about max power, they're about the personality of the motor. The reliability, the smoothness, the character, the throttle curve, all those things. This is the most perfect power plant I've ever flown by far. It definitely spoils you flying this and then going back to flying a normal two-stroke engine. I mean, there's obvious pros and cons to both, but you get back on that and it feels a little antiquated. It feels like uh, you're back on a horse and carriage in some ways. 
the frame itself is very comfortable. Um, the harness is comfortable. The, the frame itself doesn't have any weird characteristics. It's intuitive, it's easy. Uh, the weight shift is good. It's not as weight shifty as uh, the Maverick. It feels a little bit more locked in. I would say the torque compensation is not the best. It could use some more torque compensation. And you notice that when you accidentally goose the throttle hard, you notice that torque uh, comes into play. And then if you do a full throttle climb, if I don't touch the brakes, it wants to literally fly me sideways. <laughs> like you saw, I mean, that's a lot of power, so that's a lot of torque but this frame isn't really compensating for it that well. I think some people may want to know uh, what happens when you go to idle on this thing. I want to know too. I believe the propeller continues to windmill. Um, I know there is like electric braking on electric motors, but this obviously doesn't have enough braking or braking at all because the prop continues to windmill. It is obviously quiet because you don't have that tap, 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 tap of a two-stroke on your back. I do very much like uh, how you can just look down at this throttle and have all your information. I mean, battery anxiety is always going to be a thing, but the way that they uh, put all the information on this throttle makes it so that you shouldn't ever have to worry about it. If you're paying attention, you should never run out of uh, So that's all I have for the first impressions. I am really enjoying this electric motor. Like I said, it is literally the best power plant I've ever flown. In full transparency, as far as cons go, the only things I can point out is one, the weight, 78.8 pounds. I would like to see a little bit more torque compensation. And the third one is gonna be the flight time, but we will be extensively testing that in the next episode, so make sure you're subscribed to see that. And now that the video is over, be sure to visit the first link in the description, check out our new merch and make a purchase. Every $5 spent gets you one entry to win this sweet electric paramotor. We've changed a lot of lives in the past with these paramotor giveaways and you might be next. So check it out, stay tuned, and I will see you in the next episode. Till then, have fun, fly safe, peace.